Okie doke. Welcome to Blind Bread. Um, so named because uh, I'm legally blind and uh, I make bread and it comes out really good. And it occurred to me with all these silly things that people record videos about. Maybe A, blind people or even non-blind people would like to know how to make bread really well. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It's only taken me about 15 years. Uh, and by the way, there'll be Beethoven popping in and out because it is his 250th anniversary of his birth. And so that's the background music. So I'm going to go through a recipe that I got from a book called um, uh, Our, Our Goose is Cooked, which my brother gave to me. I'll point out this recipe is endemic to the prairies. Um, I spent years trying to make recipes that came from Eastern Canada and other places that did not work here in Calgary, Alberta. We're at 3,000 feet above sea level in Calgary and the altitude changes all kinds of stuff in baking. Uh, and as I said, it took me years to figure this out and once I realized that and started to make changes and adjustments, um, things have gone really well. So this is how a blind guy makes bread. I don't know what you can see, but <clears throat> somebody will tell me. Uh, oven temperature is 400 degrees, preset. That's 350. That's 400. Pot, I've put, um, I've washed my hands. I've put a, a half cup of margarine in the pot. <clears throat> already when I realized I wasn't recording so I'm going to tell you the recipe while I make it so there's that <clears throat> the preheating oven serves two purposes um, it will help the bread rise once the dough is in place I use the oven the top of the oven as a warm spot of a consistent temperature and that's ultimately the temperature that the oven needs to be at anyway so there it is and uh, <clears throat> so the margins on it on the stove. <coughs> you don't need many things, really. A one cup measure. This thing is about two and a half cups. To, to, yeah, two and a half cups. Uh, some cream. You can use milk or cream. I have coffee cream, which has gone a little off, but it's still fine for bread. As long as there's some milk in there, uh, you can either fill this with 2%, or you can put cream in the bottom and fill it with water. That's it. My thumb tells me when the, it's almost full. It's not an exact measurement um, for reasons you'll see in a bit. So it's about two and a half cups if I hold it level. Apparently that makes a difference. So the milk and water goes in here and we do the milk and water first in this container. And I turn the stove on very low and notice that there's heat from the oven. It comes up onto the pot anyway, so it's there's more heat there than stove burner indicates. Now, <coughs> I need lukewarm water. What lukewarm means is, to me, it means when it's warmer than my hand, so it feels warm on my skin. It has to be nicely warm, not just barely. I find barely warm and that's not warm enough. So I have to make it so it's kind of a cozy one. I don't know what temperature it is. My skin is 98 degrees. Well, it's not because it's room temperature, but anyways, it feels cozy warm, but not hot. You don't want hot for a reason I'll show it in a minute. Again, I use my thumb to tell it. It's almost there. Okay. So 
there's cozy warm water. The reason why you don't want it hot, or cold for that matter, is because you're going to put, um, uh, what's this stuff called? Yeast, you're gonna put yeast in it. And yeast, though dried and um, dormant in the bottle, uh, is not dead. It's alive, and when you put it in the water, it, it comes alive and starts to breathe. It's the breathing that helps the bread to rise. And if the water's too hot, the yeast will die. Uh, if the water's too cold, it stays inert, is my assumption. I haven't studied yeast life cycles very much, so I do know. Uh, the recipe actually says, um, it says two tablespoons of yeast, but I, I, I don't want the, the bread to be too yeasty because the flavor does, it is affected by the flavor. So, but one, one tablespoon of yeast wasn't enough when I include the oats that I put in. It seems to make the bread too heavy for the yeast to rise or, or maybe there's other chemical things going on. As I said, I haven't studied the life cycle of yeast. Um, I just know that if I do one and a half tablespoons, that's not a half tablespoon. This is where it gets challenging. Adjusting measurements when you can't see what you're doing. Uh, that's about a half. So there's one and a half of yeast. <coughs> and the yeast likes to have a little bit of food. While well, it's waking up, it's probably hungry. Ask the yeast about it. Just going by the recipe. So, um, I use the smallest measurement, which is a quarter of a teaspoon. This is what I use every time it asks for a pinch. I use this because, what the hell's a pinch anyway? It seems to be happy with the way I do it. So, a tiny little bit of sugar gives the yeast something to eat apparently. So it's warm and fed. And I can tell it's already softening up and growing because when I do that, well, there's some stuff there. Um, I forgot to get a bowl. This needs to be covered. Um, and so does this. Keep the heat Ask a yeast specialist why we're covering the yeast. I think it's just to keep the temperature even. in here so I do it twice um, I use brown sugar for everything just because there's an ancient uh, uh, urban myth that brown sugar is better for you um, there is a tiny tiny bit of extra I think it's a mineral content because of the Molasses. Uh, I've just gotten so used to the flavor of brown sugar that 
white sugar is frankly boring as, as heck. So, and then salt. Let's get rid of this before I forget about it. And when you can't look around and see what's on the table, you forget about the crap. Let me tell you. Uh, bowl. So we need the salt. Uh, this is coarse salt. This is the result of the COVID <laughs> chase on everything. There was no normal table salt, so I had to buy coarse salt, which in this case doesn't matter because I'm pouring it into the milk. How does a guy who can't see measure a tablespoon of salt? You know, when you hold a tablespoon in your hand and you pour salt into it until it starts to overflow. And that's probably a, a teaspoon. One teaspoon of salt, it's full. Again, because I'm in Alberta and the higher altitude, one of the things that's supposed to happen in our recipes is uh, extra salt um, changes the, uh, how things heat and how things boil, and things boil faster in a higher altitude. So if they boil, when they say boil faster, it means they boil at a lower temperature. So you have to put something into the uh, into the thing that's heating. Um, or cooking, for that matter, that will raise the temperature at which it will change chemically. And so salt, um, yeah, and how are we doing? The margarine is still solid, but it's getting there. I don't want this to be too hot, because thinking back to our little yeast friends, Again, this is all going in the same bowl over there, and if it's too hot, again, the yeast will die, and there'll be no rising of bread, which would be very sad, and I would cry. So, since this will all be in the same place, I have to check. It has to be warm enough to melt the butter. So, like I said, toasty warm works. Wow. Uh, put salt. <clears throat> and since you were asking, as I'm sure you were, this is Beethoven's first symphony. Just <clears throat> up here. Up here we have the magic ingredient, which is not that magic at all, actually. But you know. It's fun to talk like that. And actually, I've got salt and yeast, sugar. I don't need measuring spoons anymore, so I can get rid of this. What I do need, because this is the Sylvie Special bread, I need rolled oats. And the reason why it's called the Sylvie Special is because I started putting in rolled oats very quickly because I, because bread is great, but I like I like bread that has substance to it. And I was putting one of these measuring cups in, which is not a full cup measure. I'll point out this is like a two-thirds cup measure. So two of these is you know, and one and a half of these is just enough to increase the oat flavor, so it tastes like oats in the bread, a little bit, not, tastes better. But if you put two cups, which would be one and two thirds, one and a third cups of oats in with this recipe, the bread doesn't rise enough. It, it really slows down the rising, and I had issues with that, so, um, but I had to agree that it tasted better with more oats, so I found that one and a half of those, so you can do the math on a two-thirds cup measure and one and a half of them, um, the bread rises outstandingly um, and tastes really good. I need a spoon, which is in the bowl. One thing that not being able to see what you're doing does makes you very organized and it, it keeps your memory very active. I'm pretty sure that's probably warm enough. I 
can feel the heat of the pot. <clears throat> uh, there's a little tiny piece of margarine still left, um, which means that the melting is almost complete. Um, but I don't want it to get too hot, as I said, so I've turned the stove on. And I'm stirring up the salt and the sugar that was in there, so there's nothing on the bottom. Um, well, there is still a piece of margarine left. Well, let's see how the yeast is doing. So check, I haven't touched the yeast so far, obviously, and what there should be. Oh yes, there's a head. I guess I should show you what it looks like. There's a head on the yeast. Um, as the yeast is growing and breathing, it creates a foamy top. Ooh, yep. Mmm. Tastes like beer foam, basically. Um, but not as good. Uh, in any event, so that yeast is, is active and ready and happily alive and producing. It's, it's breathing. It's breathing. That's the foam is it's, it's just breathing. So I'm going to... This is what I have to do. The funny thing is, because my vision has declined since I was a kid, I have all the habits of looking at things to see, and in fact, I, I recently strained my eyes into pretty big headaches because I spent several days with friends and family, and I was wandering around places I knew, and I was looking around, except I couldn't see anything. So your eyes strain and give me really bad headaches. So I'm trying not to open my eyes because I can't see anything. It's a waste of time. But it's the habits of a lifetime, right? So there's oats in there. I'm putting this in first because um, I want it to cool off a little bit before I put the yeast in. Um, delicate yeast. So the oats and milk and margarine and the sugar and salt and it's just a liquid thing. And <clears throat> So this normally isn't sitting over here, so I'm going to move it because that will just create havoc. Oops, no, 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 no. Did I put the towel? I did. That was not a good idea. All right. Yeah, I know. I'm making bread, girl. Okay. This is my bread mixing bowl. Now, strangely, on my table, there is an old hard drive case with a pile of plastic bits and on top of that is an iPhone sitting on its side which I'm trying desperately not to knock over which is not normally there. Uh, I've got enough room. Okay, I'm going to take the yeast now <coughs> and so the reason why this bowl is in the other bowl is because Dramatic. And just when you think it's over. <laughs> Beethoven. What a drama queen he is. <clears throat> so that's all the liquid. Uh, the reason why the bowl is in the bigger bowl is because I will use that pan eventually. <clears throat> yes, I will. Don't, don't protest. Uh, as a place to mix the bread dough. So, um, and when I'm putting it in the bowl, I actually have to put more than will fit in the bowl. It's just, I don't have a bowl big enough. So, um, that I can get rid of, and that I can get rid of. And that is part of there. 
So it overflows the bowl, but it overflows the bowl into something I'm going to use anyway, so that doesn't matter. Right. <clears throat> um, one might ask why I'm, what's that? Oh, banana peel. You never told me there was a banana peel on the table. <laughs> it's the magical banana peel. You're sitting there going, I wonder what the banana peel is for. Is he going to put it in the bread? No, no, I forgot about it from lunch. So, somewhere, there's a measuring cup, and there's... So yeah, I just have the pan is there as an overflow, but it's a multi-purpose overflow because then I rinse it out and I use it for kneading the bread. This is my, my bread bowl, which I've seen refer to. So we've got all that stuff in there. This spoon is the most effective. I lost my fork, which made me sad. So this is <coughs> unbleached white flour. Unbleached because, why would you want to use bleached flour? I mean, let's be serious. I'm not making Wonder Bread. Badoosh. Um, I've tried whole wheat flour, but it's very different. Um, I, and I decided I'd have to modify my entire approach to bread making. It's, it's much heavier. It took a ton more liquid, it seemed. Um, that's three. <clears throat> um, so I decided I would go with the white flour. I would supplement it with the oats. I use unbleached flour because, you know, at least it's unbleached. Whatever that means to the world, it means we're not bleaching our food. And then usually five to start. These, this is a one cup measure, by the way. So this is five cups of unbleached white flour. <coughs> there. <coughs> and first, we've got to move that into the, uh, the oat liquid. That usually goes pretty quickly. There's a lot of activity already. A lot of air is happening in the liquid, which when you stir the flour in, you can hear. Um, maybe you can see it. I'm not the person to ask. <clears throat> so it becomes very thick, like like porridge, basically, like a, like a yeah. It becomes like a porridge. Definitely still can stir it um, once it's relatively well mixed. And the amount of flour that goes in at this point varies a great deal based on how accurately I've measured the liquids, which, as you saw, I use my thumb in a measuring cup I can't see, so it's not that accurate, um, but I can... The recipe talks about, um, what does it say actually? I forget, it's been so long since I've looked at the book. I think the recipe says 10, 10 cups of flour. I sometimes get to 10 cups, two, <coughs> but not Usually it's pretty, it's pr I'm pretty hard pressed to get 10 cups. Um, of course, I've also adjusted, probably I've adjusted the amounts based on the container sizes because this is the largest bowl for containing liquids that I have. And then the, the, the roasting pan is, um, uh, it's got a hole in it, so I can't use it to mix like this. I have to use a bowl inside of it. Um, some might say yeah, I could just buy larger bowls, but my budget does not lend itself to me purchasing lots of cookware. And frankly, as you can see, my cooking space, you see, well, I've moved through all of it during this, during this video. So I don't have a lot of room for other um, cookware. So I like efficiency. I like using things in more than one way, and it makes me feel good about you know, reduce, reuse, recycle. Well, the first thing is reduce, and if you use something for more than one thing, um, anyway, I'm not going to go into that. <coughs> this is about bread. So now, this gets really interesting because the bread is very uh, thick and solid. Um, it's no longer liquid. It's more like, um, I guess, melted marshmallow might be a good comparison if you don't know what bread dough's like. It's solid and yet you can push your spoon into it and I still get a mixed 
the flour in to make sure it's relatively well mixed before I move on to the next step. <clears throat> so as I said, the bread pan, which is my roasting pan, <clears throat> um, it's not a bread pan, it's a, my, my, bread, my, my dough mixing pan, has a hole in it, so I have to have a pretty solid thing before I start putting the dough in there. It's a very small hole, but still. Um, um, uh, so that's pretty good. Um, I can add, stay there, another cup of flour into the into the bowl as I'm mixing it. <coughs> turn over the record. <clears throat> this also gives you the chance to wash the bread that sticks to my fingers. Once the bread starts to stick to your fingers, you're really lost because it's so gluey that it, it attaches to everything, spoons, bowls, the dough in the pan. It really makes your life miserable. So I end up throwing cutlery on the floor. Somewhere. That goes over here. Uh, I end up washing my hands a couple times just because I tried to just rub the dough off, but dough is really, really, it's really likes to stick to you. I'm just going to flip a record over. Yes, a record. Flip. Flip a record. Beethoven Symphony Number no. Two, Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra, uh, Deutsche Grammophon. I think it's recorded in sixty something. I don't know. I got it. I got it secondhand. Anyway, so I'm going to add another cup to the very solid dough in the bowl because I know if I start kneading it by hand, I'll I'll be stuck forever. And that's only nine cups there. And this one in, in my hand is 10 cups, which I need to put on the bottom of the bread, the, the, the dough kneading pan. <laughs> and sometimes, if I have more liquid, um, I would need to put that 10th cup into the bowl as I'm stirring it. But this is really quite solid. I can tell when I scoop to the bottom that it's coming off the bottom as a solid piece. So that, that, well, there, see it's, it's pretty solid. I can hold it, it doesn't stick to my hand, so it's almost there, it's almost at kneading, well it is at kneading. It's at a good kneading state actually, so I'm just going to make sure none of it's stuck to the bottom. I think it's a bit drier than I normally make it, which means not as much of that flour is going to go in here. But first, the flour down there. Oops, and these chunks of flour in here. As I said, I did I say it? Blind cooks make a mess. All right, and by the way, if you're gonna ask me, did I watch the, whatever that cooks contest with the blind pie making lady? Um, I did have a couple friends go, oh, I have to watch this, and, and then the apple pie and him cutting it, tapping the top of the pie and her having a freak out. She freaked out, I can tell you, because she got lost, right? Working while you're blind means you have to have a real sense of what's going on around you and if you lose track of the things that you're doing because you're distracted by other people or making a mistake and you forget that you've already put four eggs in a bowl I mean you can't tell by looking at the number of yolks in the bowl guess what you can't see them so I understood why she was freaking out she 
lost track of something and got turned around and that threw her that that threw her off her what's this it's mojo is that the ex expression <coughs> Which is another reason I suppose I don't want to use too many different things when I'm cooking. So I can actually go right into the, oh I do need some flour. It's a little bit sticky, but not much. It's pretty, it's pretty dry to the touch. <clears throat> Once you're kneading the dough, it's a funny place you get to because you want it to be a moist loaf of bread but you have to be able to knead it. And if it's too moist, you just end up continually sticking to the, to the bread. And that does not, that does not lend itself to um, uh, effective kneading. <clears throat> what I do is, I just turn the bread a quarter turn and then press down, I fold it up on itself and I press it down. And if I keep turning it a quarter turn, it also gives me a chance to sweep the excess flour and stuff out of the, out of the mixing, out of the bread kneading pan, <sighs> into the loaf itself. And depending how careful I've been with my other ingredients, sometimes there's a whole bunch left over. Sometimes I have to add more from that, from that measuring cup, but I'm not gonna need that flour at all. In fact, I'm going to put it back right now. So this is the tenth cup right here. And I put most of it back. So there's like nine and a bit cups of flour. <sighs> um, what would that be? A approximately five cups of liquid. Um, one and a half tablespoons of yeast, <clears throat> half a cup of sugar, half a cup of margarine, and <laughs> see two thirds times that'd be only two thirds. No, that would be three. three. It, it's a little over a cup. It's one and two. Th it, anyways, the t the two thirds cup measure of oats is one and a half of those. So, and that's what's in here. Oh, and a teaspoon of salt. Right, that's it. Okay, and this, like this is ready, pretty much. Now, as I knead it until what happens is when I first start kneading it, I can feel under my hands that the dough edges and the dough inside is really rough and there's different lumps and things. But as you knead, and that was the hardest part for me was deciding how far to knead, you can feel that it gets, it feels smooth is what it does. The outside and as you're pressing down, you can feel that the inside, there doesn't seem to be any differences in the dough. It's kind of consistent. They, they, when I first read it and they said, till they get a silky smoothness, and I was like, what the hell is a silky smoothness in dough? Well, that's what it is. It's a silky smoothness. Okay. Get rid of the flour. <clears throat> so, this is the efficiency part. There's the dough. Place it in the lid for a moment while I wash out this because I need to put the dough in here to rise. Less pans to wash at the end because frankly I just 
out the first stage. So I rinse it with really hot water um, for a couple of reasons. So I've got to rinse it out because otherwise your dough, when it's rising, will stick and you don't want it to stick. So I rinsed it out, but it's hot. And then I get a little bit of margarine. <coughs> you know, tablespoon of margarine about. And we butter the pan so that the dough as it's rising will stick less to it. It still sticks. It's, 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 it's raw dough and as it expands it gets very wet. Um, it, it seems dry to the touch right now but as the little happy little beasties um, continue to do whatever yeasties do with bread. Again, I haven't studied the yeast life cycle and you know Given that we eat them, I'm not sure I want to. Because, because, it's, anyways. My daughter likes to name this bloody thing. This thing here, she names these. And my re re response is, what the hell, we're gonna eat it, don't name it. And she's like, oh, but it, it gets big, it's like, it gets, it fills the pan up. And she, she says, it's like a little baby growing in there. And I'm like, I'm, I'm just creeped out, frankly. Uh, I don't want to name something that I'm, that I'm going to throw in the oven. I guess people do it a lot. So, the oven is on 400 degrees. Um, I sit it out at the front here because more heat comes out of the door than out of the top. And it keeps it warm and helps it to rise. Yeah, and so, uh, I mean, I live in a basement, and I live in Calgary, so I can't set this outside the window to have it warm by whatever. It's only, it's only like 10 degrees out there right now. So it needs, and, and room temperature is not warm enough. So uh, this, this provides heat there. I rotate this every, uh, I don't know, every 20 minutes or so. I come around and I turn it around so that, because, as I said, more heat comes out the front, but it's a metal pan, so the whole thing gets warm. And usually it's about an hour uh, for it to rise. And fill the pan. Uh, so I'm going to stop this video for now, and I'm going to restart it when I come back. Uh, as soon as I find the video, it's up here. Yep. Okay, yeah, you. <clears throat> okay so. Beethoven. It's his fourth now. I'm checking on the dough. So. Oh, it's coming along. As you can see, probably, it's it's grown a fair bit. It's almost three quarters full of this pan. Hope you can see that. It's right there. I can feel it with my thumb. You can't see it. I think you can see it. It's probably very smooth on top, um, and uh, uh, obviously I'll continue with the music. I'm about half an hour on, so um, I cleaned up some of the pans because, as a very smart man told me a long time ago, um, if you clean up while you're cooking, then when you're done cooking, you have less to clean. So, um, rinsed out the liquid pan. Oh, I was going to tell you about wearing this stupid hat. So the reason for this silly hat is not because I'm a professor. It's because I spent like 20 grand on this education, so I might as well use it for something. So, you know, so it's, it's my baking hat. Anyway, I've rotated this. I rotate it, as I said, about every 20 minutes or so, depending how fast it's rising. It's rising good. Um, and it feels warm all around. That's the point. Like I said, the oven is on. 400 degrees. There's nothing in it. The stove is off. 
and it's a cozy place for the bread to rise in. And that's the temperature it's going to be baked at, it's 400 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's consistent. And I'm going to go back to work and, and she's going to continue to meow at me and we'll come back in about another, whenever it's ready. All right. <clears throat> One of the good things about uh, bread making, it's also a bad thing, is that there's big chunks of time in the middle when you get to do other stuff. So I've had coffee, I've done work. We're now on the uh, third movement of the fourth symphony. Um, it's getting exciting now. So, the last time I checked, this was almost ready. Yeah. So this pan is, if I leave it much longer, it'll actually stick to the lid. So it's definitely done. I mean, it's not done, you know what I mean. It's big enough. It's so big. Had to be said, so. <clears throat> you know, size doesn't matter except when you're baking bread. Wait, 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 wait. Getting ahead of myself. So anyways, uh, I hope you can see this. There's it's right up to there. It's full. Um, so before we uncover that, we need to prepare pans. Actual bread pans. I tried to get some more bread pans a little while back. I decided I made enough bread that maybe I should just have four of these, which are official bread pans. Um, but all the places we went, they had um, non-stick linings, and I've spent a large portion of my life scraping the non-stick lining that was disintegrating off of. For example, that pot I was using earlier, uh, and its, its colleagues, the frying pan and the Dutch oven, I'm happily have removed the disintegrating non-stick surface from all of them down to a very clean stainless steel surface, which I feel much better about cooking in. And so I don't want to buy bread pans that have a non-stick lining. We tried two different stores, and there were no naked metal bread pans. I don't know why. Um, unless I wanted to buy cast iron pans, which um, is outside of my budget. So, so I continue to use this, which is obviously a casserole dish. What it does mean is that I then get a variety of bread sizes, which is a good thing. It is, because some people don't want... Um, when these rise, as this one will, it's quite a large loaf of bread, so in any event, <laughs> painted my, my daughter and her mom <coughs> many, many, many moons ago. Um, don't tell anyone, I did, I'm not doing this. I'm not scooping in the margarine dish with my bare hands. That's not what's happening. You didn't see that. Good. Thank you for assisting me in my self-deception. So, uh, we 
have to obviously butter the pans, given that's I mean it's margarine, but anyways, you have to um, get the pan happy. Get the pan happy. This is what happens when you stand in front of the video camera doing crap under the pretense that someone's going to watch it. We have to make the pan happy. You know what? It's a pan. If it's going to be happy, then I'm in big trouble. Because someone's going to stick it in a 400 degree oven pretty soon. I don't have enough margarine. So the pans have to be well um, buttered. Because uh, I mean, you're baking a very sticky dough into the pan. and. At first I tried to sort of skimp on the margarine and not use too much and I just had bread that would stick in the pan and that was just a waste of lots of things. So I stopped doing that. So I'm very generous with margarine because you know what? It's margarine. And it's it's easy to do. Whoa. <clears throat> um that big pan what happens is, uh, these are obviously, well, I don't know about obviously, but these are bread sized, bread loaf sized pans. And so they make, because they rise so high, they rise quite a bit higher when they're done. Um, they make quite a large loaf. So what I do is, this pan with my divider in it allows me to make a couple of smaller loaves so I have a variety of bread sizes. Um, it works well with the volume of bread. And voila. So, as I said, it's right up here, it's right there. If my daughter was here, she'd be picking pieces out of this poor thing and eating it, calling it. Suzanne or Bob or who knows. So you go, you squish it down to press out. It's called. What's it called? It's called something. You're supposed to do it. You basically you you, you crush the the dough down to press the first rising out of the bread to a certain degree. You don't flatten it right down to the bottom because that would be. I mean, I suppose you could, but it's just going to rise again. So what's the point? So, I'm getting it unstuck from the pan, which works pretty good, and it feels much wetter than when it went in there, I can assure you, and then I break it in half, which I can, is taken a lot of failed attempts at getting half, and it's probably not half anyway. It's an estimate. So I'm going to decide which of these is larger than the other, because it's an estimate. Um, of course, this time they're pretty even. Uh, well, that's going to be too much, so I'm going to take some of that off. Not that much. Let's go with that. That seems like it's about the right amount. And then I'm going to divide that in half again. So I, this is the lesser amount, and it's going to go into the pan with the two smaller sections. So I divide it again check to see how close they are. Mm, not bad. And in fact, they might be too small. Mm. Might have made them too small. Let me take some of this back, actually. You. Mm. Well, you know what? I'm going to put it in and see. <clears throat> I second guess myself all the time. I know it has to be less, and it has to be approximately uh, about two thirds fill the space. So it has room to rise, but not too much room to rise because I don't want it to be rising for six hours because something will happen to screw it up. The biggest issues I've had while baking bread. Uh, is all based on the rising, the um, 
the happiness of the yeast, the uh, temperature of the place where the the uh, bread is sitting. See, I think that's too. That's not enough. Hmm. Well, let me check with the large one. I've got a, a piece of dough sitting on the side here, so I'm going to take the larger one, what in theory was the larger one, divide it in half. That's pretty close. I swear that's more dough. It is more dough. Okay. Let's see how it fits. <coughs> Of course, I can't see the pans, but I know from experience that this much dough, it feels like it's about the right size. And you don't want there to be any big breaks because big breaks can actually stay through the rising into the baking and you'll have, you know those gaps you have in your bread? See that? See what I'm doing? Yeah, okay. So you, your hope is that this, you've, you've, pressed it together enough so there's no bubbles of air because bubbles of air will show up in your in your baked loaf as a big bubble of air which is an empty space in your loaf which you know no one likes an empty space in the bread it's a big hole basically so I'm squeezing it so that it, there's no spaces it's pretty consistent also there's no big gaps on top because again when it's rising everything expands so if there's something weird going on it will be there and I'm thinking that I need to um, put this last bit of dough in these because these actually have so there's probably only about hmm, I mean that's over half full I would hmm, well you know you know what I don't know if you can see those you'll have to judge for yourself but I feel like I need to put more in here. See, these are actually more full than these are. Yeah, they are. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in here. I needed to get it in the pan to actually decide where to put the extra dough. I didn't think it was that close, but um, I don't know if it's because I don't have the visual choice or if it's just because of life. But anyways, this is a better size. And really the point of it is that the ratio of space left in the pan for it to rise in is the same in the big pan and the little space because it all rises at the same rate. It's all sitting in the same heat, it's the same dough. So I try to create an equivalent rising space. There's nothing, well, there's few things that are more of a pain to me than when I'm putting the bread in the oven and it's rising. It's one, like these have risen more than that, and so this is ready, but that's not. It means I have to put bread in and out of the oven at different times, which is a pain in the butt. And there's a uh, thing there. <laughs> oven, which is still on, is for more bread rising. I mean, if you can put it in the sun and the sun isn't going to go in on you, that's great. The last time I tried to have bread rise outside, uh, it got too hot and uh, it really screwed up actually. Okay, so this goes there. This is a technique I've developed over about eight years. I can get it to sit there. So I don't want these things to fall off. So there's, the heat is coming up from the bottom of this pan, so it's getting heat from its bottom. It's not too close to the, there's a little vent. Your oven produces heat from the inside, so this is really hot here. I don't want it sitting there, because then one of the sides will it'll start to bake you have to have the heat evenly but not too high because you don't want the stuff to bake before you put it in the oven <clears throat> uh, so once it's in 
place, you cover it with a towel, something that's not sealed. You don't use wax paper or something. It needs to allow the air because these are live loaves. The yeast is still alive. So it needs to, I'm assuming, it needs to respirate. Again, I haven't studied the life cycle of yeast. Um, it, just, it just says cover the bread with a towel, so I'll do that. Or a cloth. <coughs> Keeps out any uh, flying critters that may be around, <coughs> or cats. I wouldn't put it past my cat to try it out. None of them have been that adventurous, but... Um, oh, that's the wrong way. That doesn't work. Right. It's because I'm blathering away. I normally don't talk this much when I'm making bread, because I'm normally not making a video. Okay, that covers that. So I've got even amount of heat coming to all four loaves of dough. And also the point about this little setup is that I can also rotate the bread to make sure that it's getting even heat distribution because um, these loaves, because they're slightly on an angle, they'll rise more this way and I have to flip them around so they're rising completely. And um, depending on how much yeast and how active the dough is and other stuff. From this point on, it will either take 45 minutes, come and turn them once in the middle. Don't, don't refute what I have to say. I've done this more than you. Um, or it could be done in half an hour. I could come up in 10 minutes and it could have already done the rising. It's, it's very different based on how fresh the yeast is. Fresh yeast rises faster. Older yeast, it's old yeast, it rises slower. You saw the quantities of yeast I put in. That affects it. Uh, if I put two tablespoons of yeast in, these things would, have, would rise in like 15 to 20 minutes to be done, but it flavors the bread differently, so I don't want to use that much yeast. And um, however, it has written, risen pretty fast so far. Sometimes the first rise takes a couple of hours to get that big pan filled, whereas this only took one symphony, basically, between the end of the third and, and the first half of the fourth. So um, that was only about 45 minutes or so. I think I was in time. So now, 10, 15 minutes, I'll come and check these again, probably turn them. And at that point I decide if they're going in the oven right away or if some of them get to continue to rise and some of them are ready. Don't talk back to me! Somebody feed that crater, will I? Take the music. <clears throat> well, they're going to take back my, uh, my music degree, which I don't have anyway, but because that was Beethoven's third symphony, not his fourth. This is his fourth symphony. I know that this is important. It's not just a bread, blind bread baking video, it's also blind bread baking Beethoven. Anyway, um, is this on? It is on. So I came out and I noticed that these loaves are pretty close. So the trick right now, the oven is still at 400 degrees, which means it's ready for the bread. And um, I've, I've already switched these to rotate them so that they rise evenly. And you can see the thing is rising up over the edge of the pan. If I leave it too long, it will start to sag off the edges. And I've done that as well. I've, I've gone, oh, it's growing, it's growing. And I let it grow bigger and bigger. And then it, it comes out of here because it's really soft. Remember how much it's risen, it's quite soft because lots of air in there, so it'll sag over the edge of the bread. If you want it to rise and sag over the edge, it'll do that. But um, uh, that's not for me, it makes it challenging when I'm cutting it and stuff. The trick is, so in my case, usually these ones in the, in the 
and the pans are the same size because the heat is even, they're usually about the same size, which they are. The trick is, how are the little ones doing? The little ones are also um, just cresting over the edge of the pan. So same idea, if I let it grow bigger, it will grow bigger and it will fall over the edges and it'll, it'll basically make it harder to get out and harder to cut. So these are all awesome and ready at the same time. Um, again, I'm going to pick it up to show closer. You can see that the bread has risen up over the edge, um, but not, it isn't cresting over the edge of the pans. It's not anywhere near cresting to the top of that. And um, they're smaller, but this these will be really good loaves. The whole thing is ready as rain. So, <coughs> bread in. Oops. Oops, where is that? There. Um, sorry, kids, I'm not wearing enough of this. That's not what you're supposed to do, but uh, this is art, you know? I will have oven mitts next time, I promise. And there will be a couple of next times. So I center that so it's not getting heat from either side. It was my friend of 30 years when he was making pies. He kept pulling the pies out and swapping them. And I was like, what the heck are you doing? He says, well, because it's hotter at the back of the oven. No one told me it was hotter at the back of the oven before. Like, what the hell? So if you leave something at the back of the oven, uh, it cooks faster and it'll, it'll brown. Also, um, <clears throat> one moment. Yeah, I know. So that is the sound of the timer going off. Which I have to reset. That's a 17 minute timer. Yep. Yep. shut off while I was talking, the nerve of it. So I guess you do get to see me swap the, uh, the bread. And I really should have oven mitts. You know, I have enough. Yeah, I know, Katie, I'm putting on, don't worry. Katie would like me to feed her. I'm doing something else. <clears throat> so, as I said, we have to swap the bread so it bakes evenly because the back of the oven is hotter than the front. And the other thing I forgot to mention before is that once the bread is in the oven, it's done rising. The heat stops, because it kills the yeast, the heat actually stops the rising. So that's the other reason why you have to judge how much rising you want before, carefully, before you get it in the oven. So turning the bread around. So now it's been rotated. And the front ribs are in the back. And then I rotate this. So the back lobes are in the front. <clears throat> but yeah, it, um, they're basically frozen in time. I don't know how cakes work. I believe cakes will rise once they're in the oven, but bread. <clears throat> like Beethoven. Sure. Uh, bread, once it's cooking, it's set. Um, the other thing that I went on about a bit, um, baking time is also um, based on what you want to achieve. The faster you cook, you know, the higher the temperature that the, uh, uh, the bread is baking at, wrong. The length of time that the, the bread bakes affects the thickness of the crust. Katie, jeez, <laughs> did you did you do that? Has it been recording? I have no idea.
refrigerator. Zero hours. <laughs> yes, it's Zero a refrigerator. All right. Stop recording video. No. Take picture. Button. No. Stop recording video. All right. Button. This is the nature of my life. Hope the cat doesn't knock over the camera again. Anyway, crust formation. <clears throat> the longer bread cooks, the thicker the crust will be. So if you reduce the temperature by to 350, say, and cook it for in excess of 20, say 25 minutes, I don't know what the timing is for at 350, but if you cook it longer, you get a thicker crust. If you cook it faster, you get a thinner crust. So if you cook it faster, you have to cook it at a higher temperature. So I've balanced, um, uh, I think you can actually cook this bread at 450 if you want, but then you get a very thin crust. Um, 400 degrees for initially 20 minutes per rotation, so 40 minute loaf, that was good, but I found that the bread was a bit dry, uh, just, just a little bit, and changing the recipe made some differences, but I decided to shorten the baking by five minutes in total, so instead of being 40 minutes, I made it 35 minutes. So each position is 17 minutes, which is why the timer there is set for 17 minutes. I swapped the bread, it's 400 degrees, and at this altitude, with this humidity and this type of loaf and the type of materials I'm using and the quantities, it produces a bread that is, uh, you can slice it into sandwich size pieces, which initially I couldn't do because it was too dry, it would break apart. Great for thick pieces, great for toast, tasted marvelous, but if you sliced it thin, the middle would disintegrate, whereas this has enough glue in its crumb and its center bits to hold together. So 35 minutes with a swap in the middle, 400 degrees, and we're halfway through. And this poor foam is taking a beating. The end of Beethoven's fourth. No, the third movement, sorry. I'll get my credentials right. Whoa. So, the timer's gone off. Oh, you just chill. Turn off the oven. Oh. As I said, my mentor said, wash things. So I washed and rinsed these, so they're out of the way. Oh, yeah. And in case you can't tell, we're up to Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Uh, so the timer went off. It's 35 minutes. Turn that off. Get out the bread. <clears throat> what do we got here? Oh, we got the big ones. The big one goes here. <clears throat> now, apparently these look quite dark in the oven. My daughter commented on it once. But this is definitely not burnt. This is pretty much perfect. And cooling racks. <clears throat> I have had good luck in removing the bread to the cooling rack ASAP. Pardon me. So. edges around because it seeps around the thing. But it's it's see so notice the crust is hard but it's squishy. Um, I can't see it but I know from experience that this is just about perfect. So put that puppy on the cooling rack.
shape because of the way I cook it. See it's hard on the outside, but it's also, it's got elasticity. It's squishy inside, I can tell. And this stuff, I just break this off and eat them, frankly, and fit it in, sort of fit in the, uh, in the bread containers. That's a dramatic statement there. <laughs> Get ready for it. There it is. Was it worth all the effort? Oh yeah. They're beautiful. Mm. And yes, the house is full of the smell of freshly baked bread. There is that. Uh, again, that is hard, but as I tap it, I can feel it springing because it's, it's inside is soft. So because I cooked it at 400 for 35 minutes, that means the, the crust is a little bit thinner than say it, when I was still cooking it for 40 minutes, it would have been a bit thicker. Of course, it would have been cooked more, which is why it was drier. This is a lovely loaf of bread. Um, and yes, I have asbestos hands. <clears throat> Where are we here? This goes in there, that can go in there. That's kind of hot. And last but not least, <clears throat> but I have had them rise more, as I said. But it's limited returns for the uncertainty. I think that's good theme music for us, yeah. Oh yeah. Yep, it's hard all the way around. Well that that's not hard, because that was in the pan. It's actually soft there. Those are more solid, and then of course the top which was exposed. So, and I don't know how dark it looks, but these are just pretty much perfectly done. Um, and I think they look less dark after they set. <sighs> Share your bread. Everybody likes fresh bread. And like each one of those loaves in materials is probably what, there's milk, margarine, yeast, salt, sugar. Like, it's probably about 25 or 30 cents worth of, worth of supplies for each one of those things. <sighs> A lot more of labor involved, but um, see Libby. Thanks for watching. Right. Take stop recording video.